Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen uh, Benun. You're watching Danun Institute of Biblical Research, our channel here, Danun Institute, uh, on YouTube. And please do share this channel with your friends. Tonight's message is going to be very deep, very provocative, in fact. And you might want to take even a pad and pencil and follow along here, make a few notes here. I want to first share with you, before I get started in this message, um, it's about the RFID and of course I put on the screen, is to silence you. And it was something that the Holy Spirit revealed to me this morning that even without doing any prior research, it came to my heart. And my wife tells me so often, she says so many things that I research, it's amazing. She said, you won't research as much, but you just seem to know things that a lot of these scholars and things write about, and you just seem to know it anyway. I can only attribute that to the blessing of the Holy Spirit because of so much is revealed to me. And one thing that got revealed to me this morning is that our DNA, I do know that they call 90% of our DNA junk DNA. And there's been something really burdening inside of me to want to wake up. I feel like that we're in a slumber, in a sleep, and that we need to wake up. And that's actually written in one of the Apocrypha books that... Yeshua come to wake us up, to wake us up out of this sleep. Well, what does he mean to wake us up? Well, this morning the Lord began to deal with me that what is asleep in us is, our, is, is actually the DNA that's been suppressed, what scientists call junk DNA. And suddenly the Lord revealed to me that it is encoded upon our DNA, that our very thoughts, our words are actually, it's like our DNA is almost like a tape recording, a magnetic tape, like the old eight tracks or, or cassette tapes that, you know, as it picks up the sound, it puts the, the frequency on the tape there and it's in, and it's in coded inside of us. Now what's interesting, we know that when a child is born, he gets part of the DNA from his mother and his father, you know, 23 chromosomes from each, that goes into that child, it's what makes that child, and that child becomes uh, what he is based on his own parents. In fact, what's interesting, there's even a scripture that speaks about that if a child is born from a lover, the child will look like the father. Uh, and my mother really loved my dad, and I'm almost like an identical twin to my father. So as I look at my father as he ages, I know exactly what I'll look like, because all the way through life, I've always looked like my dad. All right? Now, it's interesting to watch these things. And when God began to deal with me this morning, he began to show me that everything that has ever happened in your life is encoded in your DNA. Now, I knew this was what was interesting because I had known that in the pupils of the eyes, a Hungarian doctor discovered that if you have an accident or something like that in your life, that your own eyes is like a, is, it, it, it has different dots and things inside around the, um, the, I don't know what they call that, the iris or whatever that's called there, but it puts little dots. So if you have a heart attack, you'll have the dots in there that shows you had a heart attack. If you had a broken bone, it'll show you that. And it'll even tell you what part of the body. I used to think that was hocus pocus until one day I went to uh, one of these uh, iridologists, is what they call them, and as he's looking in my eyes, he sits back in his seat. He says, wow, when did you break your ankle? I said, what? And he says, yes, you broke your right ankle. Well, I had when I was about 19. And I'm like, I'm blown away. This man knows nothing about me and he knows that I broke my right ankle. So the point is, is that iridology is a very fascinating scientific fact that a Hungarian doctor discovered that the eyes put a pattern of your whole life and what happens to you. Uh, if you're under tremendous stress, your eyes will show it, right? Doesn't the Bible say that the eyes are the gateway to the soul? So just interesting is what I'm saying. But as God began to deal with me, is that our DNA is encoding these things. And what really got me is what the Holy Spirit revealed is that the DNA that is in us, that 90% that they call junk, is also encoded from your parents, your parents' parents, and all the way back to wherever you got started at. And that the Word of God, even that was written in ancient days, has been transcribed all the way down until now. Now... I'm saying this, it may sound like, brother, what do you mean? RFID chip is to silence you? I don't get this. You know, you're talking about DNA and where are you going with this, Steve? Bear with me. It's extremely important because the government knows there is about to be an awakening of the people. That DNA will come to life and they want to silence it before it does. 
let's go right into this. I think it'll be a blessing to you. Uh, maybe an odd place to look at this, but I want to share something with you. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. So the word of God is where? It is inside of you. Even Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, often made the statement there that the kingdom of God is within you. Now that sounds odd, doesn't it? But it is. It's within you. I'd love to go deep with you guys on that, but that's a deep subject. I want you to notice something, though, right here. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. Do you know the word that is is in italics, which means literally it's not in the actual Greek. So it's actually because you have known him from the beginning. They knew God from the beginning. How could they have known God from the beginning? Maybe it has something to do with the DNA, that it's actually an encoded ancestral hand down. It may make more sense as we go along. So just follow along with me because we're going to jump back to the RFID chip here in just a little bit. The deep DNA memory Theories can remember our ancestors' lives. Now, this is an, this was a document that was written on earthpages.org on February 12th of 2014, but it's something that goes back all the way to the 60s where scientists were exploring this. Again, I had no idea of this research. I just knew that the Holy Spirit revealed it to me this morning that encoded on our DNA is not only everything that we have done, but everything in the past was in us. And I knew that not only by the Holy Spirit revealing it, but because of a fascinating passage that I'm going to share with you that was written in the Assumption of Moses that really caused me to really think and meditate upon these things before the Lord. But watch what this particular article states here. Theories that suggest that we can tap into the memories are not new. Uh, so the ancient memories, not just regular memories, but ancient memories are not new. In the 1960s, some psychological researchers claimed that there may be keys that unlock our DNA, revealing experiences of generations of our relatives who lived long before our present time. In 1988 movie, Altered State, starring William Hurt, the main character, a research in genetic roots, of the film, uh, he not only relives ancient experiences of his ancestors, he actually changes on the biological level. Now, I've never seen the movie, so I don't know about that, but it doesn't matter. In fact, for, for, for about 15 years, I even never even watched television, period, or movies or anything. I just kind of got away, got away from it, and it was, did me a lot of good in one way, I think. But anyway, this film was reportedly based on the real-life research of prominent psychologists and medical researchers of the 1960s and 70s who used isolation tanks and uh, pharmacological triggers to access deep DNA memories and experiences which they claimed were real. Now, here's the thing. You know, the Holy Spirit reveals this to me, that it is so. I have no idea that any of this has ever happened. But what's fascinating is they call 90% of our DNA junk DNA. If we look at it in this respect here, how many times do you go to the doctor and the doctor asks you, is there anybody in your family that's ever had cancer or heart trouble or any of these things here? What has that got to do with the price of tea in China? Well, it's because of your DNA. You may have inherited some kind of defect from your parents, be it mother or father, and it may have been passed down through you. Now, see, that's the thing, though. That's not part of your memory. You don't remember maybe that they had that, especially if it goes back to five generations or something like that. You weren't there. You may not have known that Grandma uh, had uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, um, heart trouble, something like that. You know, or, or, or one of your, uh, your family members was a diabetic. But somehow or another, when it hits you, that gene becomes alive again, and it sets off a transformation in your physical body from a DNA encoded, I would call it a memory, back then that comes to life. And, and people do. They have these issues that happen inside of them. 
all right? So this is what I'm looking at here. Now watch this now. Let's, let's go to the Assumption of Moses. Now the Assumption of Moses is an apocryphal writing. So therefore when I mention books like this, I'm not saying this to be an absolute or an authoritative uh, book to be. You know, these are parts of the Bible that were not accepted as part of the canon. Uh, and of course that canon has changed over the years. The Catholic Bible has more books than what the King James Version does. King James Version used to have a lot more books than what it does today. But over the years, scholars have removed different books for different various reasons, whatever they may have choose to do so. I personally like to research. Again, I don't say that the books are all uh, authoritative, absolutely perfect, nothing like that, but it's for the sake of research. So let me look at this here. Assumption of Moses is in chapter 1. It makes this statement here. Now this is Moses talking to Joshua ben Nun, which is where our family name comes from. And now I declare unto you that the time of years of my life is fulfilled, and I am passing away to sleep with my fathers, even in the presence of all the people. And receive this writing that you may know how to preserve the books which I shall deliver unto you. And you shall set these in order and anoint them with oil of cedar and put them away in earthen vessels in the place which he made from the beginning of the creation of the world. Earthen vessels from what he has created from the beginning of the world. The only earthen vessel God ever created from the beginning of the world was the human body. When I read this, now watch what he says, that his name should be called upon until the day of repentance and the visitation where, where the Lord will visit them in the consummation of the end of days. We're at the end of days right now, friends. All right? So... Joshua ben Nun was commanded to put these writings away in a vessel which he had made from the beginning of the creation of the world, an earthen vessel. What earthen vessel was Joshua to put it away in? His own vessel. He was to take those words that Moses had wrote and read those words and speak those words, and those words would alter his own DNA. It would be like a magnetic tape inside of him, and it would record everything that Moses ever said or wrote down that he read there. It was recorded on his DNA, and it's to be there until the day of the consummation. Why? I think this is how the two witnesses will unlock the mysteries of God to know the pure word of God. The pure word of God, I believe, is exactly encoded in the DNA. Not because of, oh, they're going to be reincarnated. No, it's not my point. It's the fact that genetically, you know, even like in my case, our family is descendant According to that's I can't say that's really so. It might be somebody else. It might be John Smith for all I know. And if there's a John Smith following, or you know, not following, but listening to our broadcast, I don't say that it's this brother or, or 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 Mike Woods or whoever the case may be. But there may be somebody out there that is an actual descendant of Joshua ben Nun, and because he did what Moses said, that went into his genetic makeup and his son's children. Now, we, now, here's the funny thing. We don't have a record of Joshua ever having children. But I believe that there is right. Yes, I do. Yeah, there is. We don't have a biblical record of him being married, but the Jews do have records, ancient records that they say that he was married and did have sons. All right, but the point is, is that his sons and his sons and his sons and his sons, everything that he did, if, if, that, if that book is accurate and what it says here, put them away in earthen vessels in a place which he made from the beginning of the creation of the world. Now, we could argue that the world was the beginning of the creation, but the beginning of the creation was Adam and Eve. That's your beginning of creation, right? And then he breathed into that vessel. So that's the type of vessel he's to put it in, his own body. And I think genetically it's been passed down. And that's what's interesting about this article right here. They believe deep DNA memories theories can we can remember our ancestors' lies. If that be the case, that 90% of a supercomputer that's inside of your body 
If it ever woke up, you would know those things that happened many years ago. I think there may be some truth to it. Let's move on. Scientists prove DNA can be uh, reprogrammed by words and frequencies. And this is what, again, I had no idea these things. My wife can tell you. I just sit there. I come to her this morning. I said, you're not going to believe what the Lord just revealed to me. It says only 10% of our DNA is being used for building proteins. It is a sub, uh, subset of DNA that is of interest to the Western researchers and is being examined and categorized the other 90% are considered junk DNA. The Russian researchers, however, convinced that nature was not dumb, joined linguists and geneticists in a venture to explore those 90% of the junk DNA. Their results and findings uh, and conclusions are simply revolutionary. According to them, our DNA is not only responsible for the construction of our body, but also serves as a data storage and, and in communication. The Russian linguist found that the genetic code, especially in the apparently useless 90%, follows the same rules as all human languages. To this end, they are compared the rules of the syntax and the way in which words are put together to form phrases and sentences, uh, semantics, the study of meaning and language forms, and the basic rules of grammar. They found that the uh, alka alkalines of our DNA follow a regular grammar and do have set rules just like our languages. Now, now, here's what's odd. Before I ever studied Hebrew, back years ago, I'd worked uh, as a police officer. Then I ended up doing undercover work for about four or five, actually five years after being a police officer. I worked undercover work. While I was under doing undercover work, I developed a coded alphabet that I could make notes that if they were ever, you know, anyone ever caught what I was doing, no one would know what I was writing. Later in life, when I began to, 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 to actually study the Hebraic language, I realized that about 50% of the word, the letters that I had developed in this coded language were all Paleo-Hebrew letters. Now, is that not weird or what? I mean, how? I have no idea, you know, but it was just an odd, maybe just a coincidence. I don't know, but it's just odd that something like that would happen. All right. Now, let's move on. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 10 through 15. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes. And we're going to, don't forget, we're going to get into the RFID chip. All right. I want you to understand that I think there is an agenda for this, which are written in this book of the law. And if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, for this commandment which I command you this day, is, it is not hidden from you, neither is it far off. Watch what he says here. Watch what Moses says to the children of Israel. It is not in heaven that you should say, who shall go for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. He's talking about the commandments of God. All right. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and to do it? Just like today, we've all been searching, trying to find out where is the original word of God? Is it hidden in Qumran? Is, where is it all hidden at? It's in you. It's in you as well. Not just me, it's in you. Our ancestors that have heard the word of God even before the flood. Do you realize before the flood when Enoch was here and was teaching the children of God those words that he had, his sons and things, all the way to Noah and the, and the children that came on the ark, all everything that they knew is in you today. Let that wake up in you and watch what happens. It would cause a revolution in this world. You want to talk about bringing a millennial reign? Let the people wake up with what the real word of God is inside of them, and it will revolutionize the world to world peace. Oh my gosh. So neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, who shall go over to the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto you in your mouth and in your heart that thou mayest do it. See, I have said before you this day life and good and death and evil. 
By the way, Ezekiel chapter 20 shows what the death and evil is. When Israel did not want to keep the simple commandments of God that were commanded in Deuteronomy chapter 5, where he also said, and he added no more. Instead, they wanted a detailed, laid out script of Levitical law that God never intended for us. And Ezekiel says that was the life and death. That was the one that brought death. Because there was no life in it. All right, now let's move on. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 16 through 20. He, he burneth that part there of the fire with, uh, with a part there of the, of the, uh, uh, of he eateth flesh. He roasteth, he roasteth, roast and is satisfied. Yea, he warmeth himself and saith, Aha, I am warm. I have seen the fire. And the residue thereof maketh the God, even his graven image. He falleth down unto it, and worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my God. You know, in other words, he's, you know, Isaiah is showing you what, is, what happens. I don't, I'm not reading the whole chapter, so it's kind of confusing me a little bit. But he's talking about how that man takes, whether it be from wood or stone or whatever, and he turns around and makes it into a God to serve, right? Verse 18, They have not known nor understood, for he saith, Shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. That was the prophecy of your 90% of your DNA being darkened. And none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire, yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof, and I have roasted flesh and eaten it, and shall make the residue thereof an abomination, shall fall down to the stock of a tree. He feedeth on an ashes, and deceiveth the heart, and hath turned him, uh, him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Why? This is what's happened to Israel, friends. They're blinded until this day. You know, and, that, and that's the prophecy. See, for he has, he has shut their eyes that they cannot see in their hearts that they cannot understand. That's that DNA that where the word of God is, you know, we should have been able to, like in other words, if your daddy died and never told you nothing, your mother died and never told you nothing, it should be on your DNA to where you would know because through the remembrance of what was in them is now in you and you would know the word of God. Or go back 20 generations and you should be able to know the word of God. No matter how corrupt your family became, it's inside of you. All right, there's many scriptures on that especially in the New Testament, tons of scriptures on it. Let's look at Romans uh, uh, chapter 11, just for an example here. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then is it no more of works? Otherwise, grace is no more grace, but if works, but it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath obtained that which he seeketh after, seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. Just like what we read in, uh, uh, just a moment ago in the book of Isaiah, right? And David saith, Let their table be a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. But friends, Israel is going to wake up. And I'm not just talking about Israel in the land of Israel today. Although I believe there is a remnant of the house of Judah that is living there today, that is going to wake up. And when they wake up, it is going to cause a universal awakening of the true Israelites across the globe. And that is what the government is afraid of. That's what the Vatican is afraid of. Because Satan said, I will the temple of God and I will be worshipped as if he were God. And he doesn't want Israel to wake up. This is why the government in the New World Order wants to microchip people, to alter your DNA, to make sure that part of you does not wake up. And that's what God has been revealing to me. I used to think that the microchip is not 
the mark of the beast. And I don't say per, per se that it is an actual mark, but the thing is, is I always knew that it would be to facilitate the, anti, the Antichrist system. I knew that it would be what they would do, but I did not know that they would use the microchip to suppress your DNA until God revealed it to me this morning that they will use this technology to suppress your DNA. Just like you have Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi can be used to suppress your DNA. Your modern television, your telephone, all these electronic equipments and gadgets that you have can be certainly used to manipulate your very thoughts and also suppress your DNA. But believe me, the microchip would do it better than any of the devices if they can just get it implanted inside of you. Why? Because see, Satan knows. Satan knows, even in the scripture here, in Romans 11, he knows what this scripture says here. And he also knows that they will wake up as the Bible said, out of Zion will come deliverance. See, he knows that. And he's trying to get ready to stop it. Microchip mind control. The article's title's a little longer than that, rinse.com. Actual 1974 congressional testimony of Dr. Jose Delegado. All right, this is his actual congressional testimony. We need a program of psychosurgery for political control of our society. The purpose is uh, physical control of the mind. Everyone who deviates from the given norm can be surgically manipulated. Uh, a mul excuse me, m uh, mutilated, mutilated, surgically mutilated. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I said manipulated. Surgically mu uh, mutilated. The event, the event, excuse me, the individual may think that the most important reality in his own existence, but this is only his personal point of view. This lacks historical perspective. Man does not have the right to develop his own mind. This kind of liberal orientation has great appeal. We must electrically control the brain. Someday armies and generals will be controlled by electric stimulation of the brain. Dr. Jose Amar Delegado, director of neuropsychiatry, uh, Yale University Medical School, congressional record number 26, volume 118, February 24th, 1974. Now you get that kind of people that are in control in government or in education. What in the world do you think they want to do with you? Hmm. Remember Revelation chapter uh, 13, verses 16 through 18? And he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that, they, that no man might be able to buy or sell, save uh, he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So see, it's not just a mark. You can have the name of the beast or the number of the name. All right? The beast only represents a power, a new world order, right? Here is wisdom. Let him that understandeth count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. All kinds of ideas about this, right? But let's just look at about the part about you can't buy or sell unless you have the mark. Okay? The right to grow your own food is being hijacked by the federal government, according to naturalsociety.com. In a document quietly signed into law a few years ago, you, your right to grow your own food was... Uh, super sur sur surreptitiously taken away and given to the federal government through the right of seizure given to the feds by the feds. Feds was uh, this a preemptive strike to make all Americans dependent upon corporations like Monsanto, uh, Sagentra, Dow, Bear, etc. for food. The document is titled Executive Order 13603: National Defense Resources Preparedness. In this 10-page document, the federal government declares its right to seize control of, of many things, from all forms of energy, of all usable water sources, and perhaps most alarming, of course, your foods, uh, your, your, your right to grow food. All right? Now, not only that, the government will use anti-hoarding laws to take your food and water and supplies, bugoutnews.com. Fast forward to 1994, then President Bill Clinton issued an executive order that combined a number of laws that would take the effect in the event martial law was declared. One of the laws, including in his order, EO 10 998 permits the federal government to seize hoarded food supplies from both public and private hoarders. Holders, excuse me. 
Some people may feel the federal government does not have the right to confiscate stored food in the event of the national emergency where access to food is limited. Uh, Nosyhow.com. They believe the Fourth Amendment of, of the Constitution is the one that protects them because it prohibits unlawful seizures, seizures and searches. But during martial law, all constitutional rights are out the door. It's gone. So, we come right back. The government knows Israel is to wake up. So Deuteronomy 30:14, but the word is very nigh unto you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart that you may do it. I just thought that I was trying to find a picture for Israel and I saw the cover of one of my first book I ever wrote, Israel, They Steal God's People, Refuting Israel's Enemies. So I just threw that picture up there. But you know what, friends? What's going on, they're wanting to silence you. They want to keep you. One, the microchip, you can't buy or sell. That's why they took away your rights to grow food and your right to hoard food. Some people say, well, I hoarded enough food that during the tribulation I'll be able to feed me and my family. That's why they made the law, so that they can make sure you have to buy. But you know, that's the minor issue. I think the chip is going to be placed to suppress your ability to receive the revelation of God. That part that would wake up your DNA, that part that would cause your spiritual connection to God to be suppressed. That's what they really want to do. That's what Satan's trying to figure out. Notice they keep trying all kinds of things with these microchips. When I was just putting this message together today, I found all kinds of things that they want to do with a microchip. Suppressing everything that you can think of, mind control, you name it, whatever they want to do, they want to be able to do it. And I realize now, because they know something is supposed to happen in this last day. Something is going to happen when the two witnesses come that's going to cause something within us to wake up. And when it does, then you will remember. You'll remember the pure word of God. Then maybe you might find out how much they've manipulated us down through the ages. This is why they want an RFID chip inside of you. We'll never take it. Never accept it. And it's becoming more of a reality now than any other time in history. I trust this message is a blessing to you. If it is, we do need your help in making these messages possible. If you'd like to consider uh, contributing, you can go to our website, IsraelReturns.com or IsraeliNewsLive.org. And of course, IsraeliNewsLive.co.il, our Israeli uh, website as well. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Shalom.